Hi, today I'll be showing how you can use the Map Tiles tool to generate tiles and objects for your side-scroller game. The first thing I like to do when creating tiles for my side-scroller is to create a background. In this case I want a snowy landscape with mountains. Once I have created my background image, it's time to create tiles. The first thing I like to create is the ground. Uh, it's important to remember to in-paint uh, where you want the ground to be. I have also recently added a output method which means that now you can, for example, create a, a new layer, which means that your generation will be separate from the original layer, so it's easy to uh, create um, tiles for uh, Unity, for example. When expanding on your generation, it's good to let the model see a bit of the previous generation, and then it will just fill in the blanks. And normally I like to use 64 by 64 because the quality of the generation is higher. But it can be quite useful if you just want to extend something like this to just uh, uh, use the custom size and just do everything at once. Once I'm happy with my floor, I'm gonna just add some extra floor underneath just to make it a bit more... Uh, side-scroller feeling. Sometimes you won't get the generation that you think is the best, then you just can try again and try again until you get it right. Here I'm thinking I want to create a house. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna in-paint where I want the house to be. Uh, you might want to use a init image if you want something in particular or like a, in a certain shape but usually it works quite well here you can see I uh, select a bit of the ground as well so the model gets an idea of uh, the color palette that is used in the image and just for fun I'm thinking I want to extend this house with a market next to it. First, I want to try just 64 by 64 and uh, see how that goes. What I noticed after my generation was that because the model didn't see much of the image, it had like a, a color that wasn't really fitting for the style. So, in my next attempt here, I use a bit more of the house in my generation and I feel like that helped improve the results a bit. And then I did some small edits just to make it look better together because the model can't see what's underneath the in painting so it removes some of the house. So then I had to go in there and fix it. But thankfully the new um, the market was generated into a new layer so it's very easy to just fix it. Now I'm thinking let's create a waterfall. So what, when creating a waterfall I recommend using a, a init image and then color in where you want the waterfall to be and use a pretty high init image strength. You might need to um, try some different ones and see what you feel uh, works best. A fun little hack I have learned is that you can uh, decrease canvas size without losing any information. So after you're done you can increase it back and it will look the same. So here I want to try the animation tool and see how it can animate waterfalls. What's good to remember is you want to use init images just to help the model know uh, what the waterfall should look like. And don't forget to in-paint uh, the waterfall or what you want to change. You will notice that I 
accidentally in painted uh, a bit a bit of the mountain as well so it accidentally changed a bit in the generation so I had to go back and uh, fix it but once you're happy with your animation you can increase the size back again and yeah this is the result while editing I noticed I accidentally in painted the waterfall so here is an example what it would look like if you didn't in paint the waterfall and let the model see the first uh, frame of the uh, waterfall animation We are currently having a free trial for two of our tools, so if you're interested, you can uh, go to our website, and I will link it down in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.